hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, on Tarzan. Well, first of all, we shot most of the scenes on sound stages. So it was in a controlled environment. Um, on most of the scenes we shot with multiple cameras and, and several cuts in the big fight scenes. So it was definitely physically and mentally challenging, but you could also cut around on uh, the way Robert Eggers, um, the way he works is, as you see in the movie, all the fight scenes, it's basically just one continuous shot. Um, so you can't really cheat it. You have to do the whole thing over and over and over again. And we shot on location. So you're out in the elements, it's freezing cold at night and it's Northern Ireland. So it's like rain from the side hitting your face as you're trying to do a complicated court grab fight scene um, with the adrenaline pumping for a full week. So it, it, it was very, very difficult. Um, but I tried to just embrace that, and, and again, it's a, it's a Viking movie, and I play a berserker, so I just tried to use all that, the fact that we were out there and that it was so crazy, um, to help get into the, the, the Viking mindset. Yeah, well, we shot in Northern Ireland, and well, and we shot all over Ireland in the end, um, and we shot in Iceland, and... Um, yeah, I mean, the, it was very difficult uh, conditions, and you, you, you know, you some of the, some of the conditions you can see clearly are rough conditions. Uh, so, sometimes the grass being so green diminishes the harshness <laughs> that we experienced. And the other thing that you can't see because drizzle doesn't uh, photograph is that it was raining virtually every single day because we were shooting single camera um, at, with these long unbroken shots. It required a lot of planning and a lot of discipline. And so everyone, you know, uh, everyone needs to come together, everyone, to like make this one thing happen. So I think there was a lot of passion for the film. And so even though I'm sure Alex wanted to kill me sometimes, you know, everyone knew that it was going to be worth it. Yeah, I mean, the, the camera is like virtually always moving and, and the first two films particularly, like I just have a lot more static stuff. I mean, and, and, and it, there's a couple different reasons for that. I mean, w you know, The Witch is a slow, boring, art house movie, right? And so it can behave in that way and, it, and it's supposed to be patient, you know? This is not, you know, this is, this is an epic. This is a story for like all of us, you know. And the other thing too is like I, as much as I personally love the verisimilitude and the details of the period world, like I can't, I'm forced to not in, in, indulge in it uh, in the cinema language because if you just have one camera and you're pointing it at the most important thing and you're moving and then you you know around the sides you can see what you see and learn what you learn but there's no like cut to the cool looking hunting dogs <laughs> cut to the musicians <laughs> you know it's like you know there's no that Jaren and I did not have the experience to make this film at all like it's you know Short film, slightly more complicated short film, The Witch, The Lighthouse, The Northern, you know, it was, it, and so, so we had to plan it to death in order to not fail. And I, and, you know, I'm like, uh, certain things I'm really proud of and I feel like we got there, but certain things fall short for me, you know, be, be, because, because we weren't at the experience level to do this, you know. I mean, no. Uh, I mean, I think if it wouldn't, I mean, like, like again, it, it wouldn't have gotten financed, but if it didn't take place in Iceland, I probably would have enjoyed for it to be black and white. As much as I prefer, uh, you know, 
not this aspect ratio. Like you, we needed it for the landscapes and we needed it for some of the action sequences. But you know, when it's a scene of like close up, close up, close up, for me, I'm like, what is this shit on the sides? It's just a waste. I mean, the, the ones that were the most complex were, were re really well planned. So it's actually, funnily enough, some of the simpler things that were, because we didn't plan them to death, because we were like, okay, well, well, there's just a couple horses, whatever. You know, there's this nothing shot of Alex and Anya, like, riding, uh, like, back to camera out to the sea, and there's, like, some guys with a rowboat and a knarr out to sea. That was, like, 31 takes or something. You know, because it wasn't something that we like planned to death, and the, and it was like tricky with the, the horses. The first attack of the village was technically the most challenging because there's, I think there's 15, 20 actors, there's 30 stuntmen, there are horses. We're fighting. I'm on the ground fighting a dude on a horse. He's falling off the horse. We got hundreds of extras. We're ascending walls and jumping like it, you've seen the sequence it's it's pretty chaotic um chickens flying around <laughs> it was it was a lot and again if one single detail wasn't perfect we would have to go again from the beginning it was like put back put put on the wolf hide again and start the attack from 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 scratch and i think we did it close to 30 times um and it's such a physical journey of that 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 sequence that it's um i was exhausted the first time we did it but so you can imagine after doing it close to 30 times it, it was incredibly tough um but i would say the the mental mentally the toughest one was the 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 end fight yeah. on top of the volcano um because it was a freezing cold night shoot we shot it for a full week and it's a very um i'm naked and i'm covered in blood, so I'm also freezing cold. Um, and it's a long sequence that you kind of have to remember when it's four o'clock in the morning and you're standing outside shivering. It was literally snowing some of the nights, so it's, it's, it's quite miserable. Well, yeah, because he was naked in the rain, in the freezing cold, like f sword fighting for two nights. So yeah, but I, I was dressed in rain gear and was, you know, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but again, in a way, I think it potentially helped because my character is almost, I mean, he's, he's, he's incredibly fatigued and, uh, um, and, and desperate in that moment. So uh, hopefully I, I got it somehow, I try to channel like my inner berserker somehow. The, the scene builds up, it's a transformation uh, where our characters go from human to, um, to back to a more atavistic, more animalistic state where our, we become the, the animal, our spirit animals, basically. Um, and, and at the end of it, the, the, the idea is, is we're in, in a trance almost. So you kind of have to just let go of everything and go crazy. Um, and that scene that you see in the movie is actually, we did it 25 times, the whole thing. Um, and then at five in the morning, we were done. The sun was about to rise. I, I went back to the car and after doing it 25 times, there's so much adrenaline. And once you pull the plug, you're like, I've never been more tired in my life. And I get back in the car to go home, take a shower and sleep for hopefully 10 hours. Um, when a PA comes up and knocks on my window and says, so sorry, but there was a little hair on the lens. So we have to go back, put all the stuff back on do it again and i thought she was joking first like but no no surely we got it but like no so sorry so myself and all the other berserkers we had to come back from when we thought we were done and that was the the hardest moment because it's once as long as you have the adrenaline pump and you're in it you just you don't feel the pain or how tired you are but when someone says we're done we got it that was great moving on like go home then to to get back up into that state was very hard but it's in the movie we somehow did it and i think like so that frustration was was genuine in, in our eyes yes <laughs> cool. 
Well, yeah, because I'm trying to present their culture without judgment. And um, because I, how, how else can I honestly tell this story? But, you know, I don't. <laughs> the, the, as much as Viking poetry and visual arts and, and they, like, they, were, uh, they, they, they had cultural fusion and religious fusion, like, and te they were technologically ad advanced. Uh, uh, they were incredibly, horribly violent and terrible as well. And uh, so clearly things don't change. And so uh, we need to be honest about that. Yeah, I mean, I take liberties with Saxo-Grammaticus. I mean, Saxo -Grammaticus, like recorded the version that Shakespeare read and is like the, the most available version. There's some later Icelandic ones. Saxo presumably read an earlier Icelandic source that no longer exists. It was just kind of a jumping off point because it's a, because having it be Hamlet, it's a story that everybody knows. So, so I can indulge in the mythology and the rituals and the Viking world w without like confusing an audience. Cause let's be real, like it's a big film and it needs to like, Sell tickets. <laughs> the Valkyrie does not have braces. Uh, there's um, uh, there's been there's archaeological finds of Viking skulls that have grooves, horizontal grooves carved in their teeth. Um, that w w some historians think they might have filled that with uh, enamel. Black, blue, whatever, you know, Harold Bluetooth perhaps had blue grooves in his teeth. How could I possibly let such a massive anachronism slip? Jaren was incredibly frustrated because Viking architecture does not have windows. So, and there's, I mean, there's not a lot of daylight scenes anyway, but, um, and, 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 but they have like smoke holes and there are things that look like windows that are also really just ventilation uh, holes for smoke and, or for uh, animal waste. Um, and so, so that, you know, and, and then at night, it's basically just like a fire in the middle of the room. You know, I watched, um, like and, uh, Ang Lee's Lust Caution uh, and the like detail of the lighting to convey the character's emotional experience, you know, we couldn't really do that. You know, we, there, the one time where it really worked out with this fire in the middle of the room is the scene as far as uh, like emotional storytelling and not just like this is a realistic and nice looking shot. Was is in the scene with Nicole in the bedroom because first she's front lit and looks sort of vulnerable, and then as she crosses the fire, she's like underlit and demonic, and then when she gets close to the end, she's like backlit and stunning. So that was very cool, but um, but we yeah we we had massive fires and there's a and in the great hall in the beginning of the film, the fire was would be would have been so massive to get exposure that we would have like killed everyone. So there we had to ha cre create a, like a light bulb rig that was replaced with, um, uh, with fire plates that we shot later. Uh, I mean, I was fortunate, just, I mean, so Shion, my co-writer, has known Bjork since they were teenagers and Robin Carolyn, uh, the co-composer is friends with Bjork and is one of my good good friends. And like over the years, I, my wife and I, uh, like had a friendly relationship with Bjork. So I think she felt that it was like a familial environment. So it's cool to see your family. Too. Yes, it is. I never want to watch my movie again because I've seen it so many damn times. Um, I think <clears throat> I'll give two Viking movies, um, if that's 
okay. Uh, but the Fleischer Viking movie is good. It is good, you know, for the 1950s, it's pretty great, you know. I mean, Kirk Douglas would have been completely ridiculed for not having a beard in the Viking age, but other than that, it's cool. And, um, and then there's, a, there's an Icelandic version of, of Gisli's saga uh, called The Outlaw that's imperfect but interesting and, and closer to some things that exist in this movie. It's the only other movie with a Knott Laker game, which is the Viking uh, field hockey. Um, so, um, and then what's my favorite revenge? Well, um, I guess it's Conan, which is quoted, uh, sometimes deliberately quoted, sometimes accidentally quoted, because I saw it so many times when I was a kid. Um, but I like, I like Conan. So my dad loves to cook. He's a great chef. And after, um, as, I'm, as I, I take it you've read that uh, after Tarzan, w on which I was an incredibly strict diet, um, I went to dad and, and I got to drink wine and beer and eat pasta again after nine months of none of that. For this one, it wasn't as strict, the diet. It was, I, I had to put on weight because my character is, his spirit animal is a hybrid of a wolf and a bear. So I had to kind of look a bit more bear-like. Um, but it wasn't, I, I, I could at least drink some beer and have some good food. So on weekends, I could relax a bit on this one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Thanks, man. Oh, was it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went on, as soon as we wrapped the movie, I was, I kind of stopped working out, uh, and started just eating and I've been drunk for a year and a half now. <laughs>